we talk about home canning, we often talk about high acid foods versus low acid foods. And you'll notice that everything in there has got the word acid in it because basically all foods are acidic. So I've kind of drawn out or laid out a pH scale for you because the acidity is measured via using the pH scale. So we start down here, These, this is the base end uh, where you might find baking powder or baking soda and I didn't put those on the table because you don't can with those but you'll notice the scale runs from 14 and all the way up to zero but from 14 to 7 is where we call base, basic foods or basic uh, ingredients or basic items or alkaline and we just don't have any when it comes to the food category with things that we can at home. So that is pretty much something you can ignore. And what we're going to pay attention to is the area from seven to zero. Uh, here we have things that do have acid in them and all foods are going to fall in this category pretty much. Now you notice that we start right here at the center line which would be neutral and milk falls into that category. Now you can buy commercially canned milk but you can't find milk at home uh, recipe to do it at home because it's going to curdle on you and not be successful but that's where it would fall on this line. Now you notice that it does go from seven to zero and I've drawn an extra tape here uh, at the 4.6 mark and that's because everything that's above this line uh, or on this side of this line has enough acid in it that you can put it successfully and safely in a boiling water canner. There's enough acid in there that it will prevent the growth of Clostridium bacteria which can then produce Clostridium botulinum which could in fact kill you. It may in fact, if you don't do it correctly for the long enough time and in the right container and all those kinds of things, it can still spoil on you. But if it's above this line, it shouldn't be something that's going to kill you. It'll either taste bad so you won't eat it, it'll look bad so that you won't eat it, those kinds of things which will be protective for you high enough acid to be safe. And if you look at the kinds of things that fall over here, it's fruits uh, for all intents and purposes. Apples, peaches, blueberries, which I don't have here, but blueberries would fall here. Strawberries and the lemon over here on the far end uh, with a pH close to a two. Now the other thing that you need to know about pH is that the pH range, there's a range for each of these fruits. So the pH for a lemon may be between 2 and 2.4 because different varieties of lemons, uh, lemons at different stages of ripeness uh, and so on are going to have different amounts of acidity so that uh, we use when we, we can uh, if it calls for additional or acidification, we use a commercially bottled product because we know the acidity is going to be consistent from bottle to bottle, whereas I don't know the acidity is going to be consistent from lemon to lemon or lime to lime. So that's an advantage for us. Uh, now also you'll notice that on this line, uh, these are safe to can in a boiling water canner, is the tomato issue. The tomatoes cross the line and the tomato acidity is going to vary depending on what variety of tomato you have and what stage of ripeness it's in, the riper it is, the more uh, or the less acidic it's going to be, uh, the condition of the vines when you harvest, if they're dead or decayed or diseased, the pH is going to drop and you're going to be moving closer to this side. Remember this is the divider side on when it's safe to go into a boiling water canner and when you have to use a pressure canner. So in, in order to make these safe, uh, to go in a boiling water canner, what we do is acidify. So we either add vinegar or we add lemon juice or we add citric acid or something. And that in effect moves them all over to this side where it's safe to go here as opposing to having to put them into a pressure canner because we as consumers and, and folks at home are gonna have a difficult time knowing without blending it and getting pH paper and all kinds of uh, paraphernalia which is going to destroy our tomato product whether or not it's gonna be safe enough to go one way or the other. So let's look a little further down the line. These we're gonna acidify to make sure they're safe but on this side of the line you'll notice it's basically vegetables. Green beans, beets, carrots would fall over here, cucumbers, potatoes, corn, meat would fall over here. All of these things are gonna have to go into a pressure canner in order to make sure they're safe. But remember that acidification process. Nobody cans cucumbers as cucumbers. We can cucumbers as pickles, which means we're either going to acidify them ourselves by adding vinegar to them, or we're going to do a fermentation process by which some bacteria are gonna make some acid. And that enables us to move those pickles because they've become pickles now, from this low side where we're going to have to use the pressure canner over here, they're going to end up right around where the peaches are because we've acidified and that makes it all work together properly. If there's not acidification, which means that we have to have a tested recipe 
because if you decide to create these cucumbers and turn them into pickles on your own without a tested recipe, you won't know if you developed enough acid to prevent that growth of uh, Clostridium botulinum, and you might, in fact, need to put them in a pressure canner, which would destroy the quality of the pickle. So it basically goes back to following a tested recipe to make sure that whatever method you're using is the one that's appropriate for that product, that it has enough acid, that you're doing it long enough to make sure, because it's a balance of time, temperature, and acidity. And while we've talked about acidity today, we haven't talked about time and temperature. So I hope you'll keep these things in mind as you're looking for recipes for home canning this summer. For Oklahoma Gardening, I'm Barbara Brown. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.